name is Laura Alford, and this is our hydrostatics video on probabilistic damage assessment, which I promise is not nearly as ridiculous as it sounds. So, recall from one of our previous videos that we were talking about this thing called subdivision. And subdivision is just when you take the hull of your ship and you break it apart into pieces, into compartments. The reason being is that in case something happens to your ship and one of these compartments floods, you can restrict it to just that one compartment or maybe the one next to it if you actually manage to take out a bulkhead. Um, but this means you can restrict the flooding and then hopefully that gives your people time to get off board, uh, off the ship onto lifeboats or onto another, another ship and hopefully keep the ship upright, safe, and stable. Right. Along with this concept is this thing called floodable length. And as I mentioned before, before, floodable length is kind of an older way of looking at whether or not a ship is going to be able to survive a given sort of damage. And so to make the floodable length, right, you go somewhere along the length of the ship and you figure out how much on either side of that point can the ship flood and still have the ship be basically upright, safe, and stable so that you can get people off. Right? You do that all along the ship and you get this red line, right, that's the allowable floodable length for your ship. Um, the actual floodable length that you're going to get is going to depend on where you put your bulkheads. So once you put your bulkheads in and you get your subdivision set, you need to go back and check it and make sure that all those the, the actual floodable lengths are underneath the allowable floodable lengths like we've talked about before here. Right? Um, but like I said, that is, is sort of an older way of doing it. And eventually something happened that, we, that made us all think that maybe there's a little bit better way of going about this. Um, what I'm talking about is this, uh, the tragedy of the Andrea Doria. Now, the Andrea Doria was a passenger liner, and she was inbound for New York City. And as she was going by Nantucket, Massachusetts, there was another uh, passenger ferry, not ferry, a passenger vessel called Stockholm. The Stockholm was heading out into the Atlantic. Andrea Dora is coming down out of the Atlantic, heading for New York. Um, the both ships saw each other. They had this newfangled thing called marine radar that was developed in World War II, and we can see other ships and things that are far away, and we should have been able to avoid a collision. But unfortunately, marine radar was still kind of new, and uh, it was. I think the operators weren't quite up on how to interpret all of the results. And what happened is that instead of the ships seeing each other and one coming this way, one coming this way, and then turning to avoid each other, they kind of turned into each other and they ended up colliding. So the Stockholm ran into the side of the Andrea Doria, gave her a severe list, and she ended up capsizing. Okay. Um, so this is the two different damage scenarios that we've got. The Andrea Doria, right, massive starboard damage, um, heavy flooding, se um, severely listed over to the starboard side, which meant that the port lifeboats could not be lowered. Um, fortunately, there were many boats nearby, and e there, um, about I think it was 51 people lost their lives, but the va everybody else was able to be rescued due, due to some very good organization and very quick response on the part of some nearby ships. Um, the Stockholm you see here has a completely mangled bow, but managed to stay upright and afloat. So and you look at these two things, and uh, both of these ships were okay, uh, okay design-wise, right? Like the Andrea Dory, she was designed to withstand 15 degrees of list. Unfortunately, in this accident, uh, she had 20 degrees of list. And so the old rules were, they're finding it wasn't enough. So well, what can we do? There's got to be something better, right? Because the problem is, is we don't know where the damage is going to occur. We don't know, could it be here? Or it might be here. Or it might be here. It might take out two compartments, and in this ship, this sh that ship would sink. So we just, it's like, we just don't know. We don't know what to do. What's that? Oh, sometimes we do know. We know more. We know more than we think that we do. Um, so, for example, for a ship to survive, we know it depends on a bunch of things. And it depends on the KG, the trim, permeability of the compartments that got flooded, how many of them got flooded, um, what are the environmental conditions, is it a nice, pretty day where lots of ships can see you and come to your rescue, or is everything obscured by rain and fog? Um, how far away is help, right? With the Andrea Doria, there was lots of boats that were nearby, and they, they were able to get there quickly. So all that stuff to, is going to factor into how your ship is going to survive. But that's really complicated. Right? That's a lot of stuff to think of. And if you're trying to compare designs, you, that, that's too much. Like We need one thing, one thing to look at. All right? So in engineering in general, we're never going to know everything. Right? It's just there's uncertainty all around us, but we still need to take it to take this into account so we can actually make a design that's going to work and we've got some confidence in it right so probability theory is what we use to capture all of this uncertainty and still make good designs for the ship survivability we 
can do some calculations, right, on damage stability. We can figure out how does the GZ curve change when compartments get flooded? How does that affect the KG and the trim and, and the depth and the draft? We, we can figure all that out, except that we don't know which one is going to be applicable at the time of the damage because we don't know where the damage is going to be. Right, so all of that is still kind of uncertain, and so we're going to take all of that together, and we're going to turn it into this use this probabilistic damage assessment and try and lump all of that together so we can come up with one clear picture of how safe our ship is. Right, okay. So the safety of life at sea convention first met after the Titanic sank because the Titanic did not have enough lifeboats for all of its passengers. And so that's the first time it met. And it's met every once in a while since then, whenever something new com comes about and it's okay, we need to make a big change in the rule shift for classifying, for classifying vessels and ships. Um, so their recommendation after the Andrea Doria was that we needed to use probability to evaluate the survivability of our ships. So we need to go and figure out how are the ships damaged? How often does that damage occur? And then given that kind of damage, what are the chances that you're going to survive it? And we got to roll all that together into one thing. All right? So to do this for your ship, you're going to make big giant tables. We love tables, right? So the first thing is look at if the compartments flood one by one. So look at compartment one. Figure out what is the probability that only compartment one is going to, to flood. Figure out what the probability of surviving compartment one being flooded. If you multiply those two together, that's P1 times S1 there, that's the probability that you will survive compartment one being flooded. All right. um, do the same thing for compartment two, compartment three, compartment however many you've got. All right. Add all those together and that's the sum of the, all the probabilities. So that's the probability that you will survive any one compartment being flooded. Okay? Fair enough. Do the same thing, but now look at two compartments. So now we've got compartment one and two. So what's the probability that both of those compartments flood at the same time? And then what are the chances that you're going to survive that, that compartments one and two are, are flooded? Multiply the two together, and then that's the probability of surviving that particular flooding case, the compartments one and two. So again, so do one and two, and two and three, and three and four, and all combinations that you've got. Add all those together, and then that's the probability of surviving any two compartments flooding at, a, at any given time. Right. Um, again, you can do the same thing for three compartments, four compartments, however detailed that you want to get ready. Right? Just keep multiplying these all together and then adding them up. Um, so for this case right here, it's the probability of, of three compartments flooding. Now, buried in all of this is actually a whole lot of details. There's things that you have to worry about, like does the entire compartment flood? Does it flood all the way across the ship? transversely? Does it flood all the way vertically? Um, there's lots of other factors that are in here um, that I don't have the space or time to get into in this video, but it is in the rules and regulations for your ship. Um, and then another thing just to point out is that the probability of compartment one and two flooding or compartments uh, one, two, and three flooding at the same time is not the same as just adding up the probabilities of each compartment flooding um, on its own, right? So again, there's a whole lot of probability theory that's rolled into this that I could maybe do if we had about six more videos, but we don't. So just, I'll leave it at this and say that um, all of these tables likely at wherever you work or whatever school you're at, somebody's probably got a version of this already. So you just can get that and then sort of just tweak it for your ship and what classification it falls under. I, okay. So the whole goal of the big giant tables is to come up with this one number, this attained subdivision index. And all of this is it's, you take all the probabilities that you just calculated and you sum them all up. And then that's got to be bigger than this required subdivision index R. All right. So you calculate your, your subdivision index for your ship, which is A. And that's got to be greater than R. Another way to think about it is if A divided by R has got to be greater than 1, right? whichever way makes more sense to you in your head. So like I said, there's a lot of details that are buried in here. Um, the current rules and regulations for your ship, right, they will lay it all out and describe it all in great detail. And it's not really that hard. It is just, it's a lot of bookkeeping. It's a lot of numbers, just like a bunch of stuff that we've been doing with these videos. So just be very detail oriented um, and get somebody to double check your numbers and I think that you'll be okay. So, anyway, so that's how we try and tackle damage stability and try and figure out how is our ship going to survive given that we don't know exactly how damage might occur. Um, and the probabilistic damage assessments is a good way to kind of capture all of this uncertainty. So I hope that this helps. And as always, thank you very much for watching.